Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode we're going to send those missions that we had launched over to Drez and so that's the first thing but we're not actually going to reach Drez in this episode and that's because we have a lot to do before those craft actually arrive there. They're going to take uh, well certainly more than 80 days and so we're going to have to handle this Eve transfer from Kerbin to Eve. We've got stuff to send over to Jewel and we need to bring back the Explorer X from Eve back to Kerbin so it can be refueled and reprobed uh, so that it can continue on to some other destination. So those things have to happen before our craft actually reach Drez. So that's a very complicated situation and probably I'm going to try and marathon this. In other words, I'm going to record a bunch of stuff in one sitting and then chop it up into many episodes because then I'll at least have continuity and I'll uh, keep in mind what I'm trying to do. Otherwise, if I try and do them in different sittings, I'll probably get confused about what I need to do next. Yep, I think we have to check our contracts because as far as the jewel mission is concerned, I think we have quite a bunch of stuff we have to do. Now, we do have visual surveys of Minmus, but that's deadline in three years. Um, Science Day from Space Around Moon is just a running gag. Uh, we do have this Class A asteroid, and I think we have one lined up there, so that's something else we have to do, but we've already launched the, the grapple for that, and the Class A shouldn't require more than one, so we'll handle that uh, pretty easily. But then the Jewel stuff, we have to build a new orbital station around Jewel. Um, this eject the Class D asteroid out of the solar system is in seven years. Uh, we'll have to wait on that, I think. And now we've already gotten the advance, which is substantial, and the failure is painful. So we have to build some large rocket to handle this, or assemble something large in orbit to deal with it. Uh, but for for Jewel, we have to do Bop, Jewel itself, and Paul as far as exploration is concerned. We are sending something over to Eve in order to uh, transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of Eve. So we need something that will survive. Eve re-entry and landing so that is the plan there and yeah so but first let's get to our Dres missions we begin with the CRT with Genemini Kerman which has a battery power issue it needs to be able to extend its solar panels which are currently covered by these fairings but really it just needs to burn out this stage in order to get those fairings off so let me plot a temporary transfer to Dres so that we can just uh, burn out in the right direction because we're not going to be on escape in the, uh, with this 499 meters per second and so it'll just be in a high orbit and then we can do the rest of the burn closer to the correct date remember we have to wait how many days? six days before the actual transfer but at least we can get the apoapsis pointed in the right direction uh, when we do this part of the burn so we'll sell this right now um, looks like the orientation is like this and our target is the very hard to see Drez. So we're not going to actually transfer yet but we're going to do this burn here. I think it should be around here, we'll see. Probably need some adjustment. Okay, here we have a sort of close situation and we don't need to get it very precise because this is just a temporary burn to uh, expend this stage. So we'll do this sort of burn, and uh, we'll wait the rest of the six days before doing the rest, and we'll probably have to replot for that. So let's just uh, take a look at our life support situation. It looks like it's going to take like 90 days to get over to Drez, maybe up to 100 days. Uh, here it is showing 101 actually, so 102 days let's say. Uh, so Mooner Station 1 is going to be a little bit tight if we complete the mission before resupplying it, but we can manage that. Uh, it looks like everything else should be fine all the way through this, uh, this whole endeavor, with all of the other missions uh, getting launched at least, though not arriving. The Jewel missions will probably not arrive before we have to resupply other things. So yeah, all very complicated and all. Okay, here we go for burning out this stage. Okay, there it is. Merely gets us to an hour and 35 minute orbit, so not that far out. I mean, it's like, just got us to that. 
still it's actually halfway, more than halfway to the moon in terms of delta v. But here we'll have separation. And ignition of the next engine. And I'll we'll burn forward a little bit. Okay. This will be replotted. And now we can extend. Oh. No, no, Smarty SS. It's, it's alright. We, we'll continue pointing in this direction. It's fine. Come on. Auto saving. Alright. Yeah, let's get rid of this node. Let's see. Uh, action group to solar panels or no? Yes, we did. Okay, good. All right, so solar panels will now be out, it'll recharge, and all will be well. So, Genemini Kerman is set. We'll probably just uh, continue with Genemini and get him on the transfer first. Yeah, I think that's the plan. We've got a lot of stuff to send to Dres, but uh, the crewed mission, I want to see how this turns out first. Oh, and also our, our Oasis also is a crewed mission, so we have to pay attention to that as well. All right. Uh, let me go back to the tracking station and time warp through these six days. Okay, I'm stopping short of the actual alarm to make sure that we have time to do everything and get everything on its way. Um, also, note that the Class A asteroid that we want to wrangle is in 18 hours. So right after we launch, uh, get these uh, on their way to Drez, we're going to do that next. Okay, so uh, let's continue with the Nemini Kerman. Okay, so according to this, with a 940 meter per second initial burn and then a plane change maneuver of 777, we will get a Drez periapsis of 5,500 kilometers. Now, and that's in 110 days now. Uh, that is okay, I suppose. Uh, we do have the delta v for that. I'm a little bit concerned about how much we're gonna have to burn in order to get into orbit around Drez. And, and this is the mission that's going to be the tightest on that. So we will have to worry about that, but uh, we'll do what we have to do here. And so it looks like this is the combination of burns that will get us to a good trajectory there. It looks like pretty much a home and transfer. Doesn't look like we're uh, too far off here. We're hitting a little bit early. We should be hitting here instead of here. But uh, that's probably because of the timing of it. So And the initial burn we also did to boost ourselves out. So yeah. I think uh, we will take this, and so yeah, Genemini Kerman is all set. All right, one scribble joint reinforcement adjusts. Here we go. Okay, coming close to the end of this burn. Now, instead of replotting the mid-course plane change right now, I'll just take what I've got. I'll try to get as close as possible to this planned burn. Of course, we're going to be a little bit off. But since the mid-course plane change is a pure inclination change, I'll just uh, do the inclination change at the uh, appropriate time, and then we will see how close we get and make adjustments after that. That'll shorten the amount of time. The less time I'm tweaking maneuver nodes, the quicker I can do all of this. Okay, let's try and hit this. Okay, well, we'll pretend that I've got it there. And so this is the next maneuver. I'm going to add that here. That alarm is in 21 days. We're going to have quite a lot of things to do. So that's the maneuver node alarm for that. All right, next mission. Okay, so here we are with the Drez Oasis. And hopefully we will be giving it the best possible transfer time, judging from where we are right now. The other two vehicles, the... The drilling unit and the rover will be probably uh, being sent out a little bit later. Okay, there's 107 tons right now in orbit, and we will be wanting to get it as accurate as possible. Lots of Kerbals are depending on this. All right, so let me plot it out, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, well, this is not too different from what we had before. Uh, looks like 110 days again. Uh, 1,436 on the initial burn and then a 776 meter per second mid-course plane change, pretty much the same. So yes, this is, well, more or less expected. Uh, the node in 31 day, uh, 31 minutes, sorry, uh, past the actual time, but that's the best we can do. Interestingly, uh, we are ha getting a 
moon encounter on the way out. Unfortunately, I have enough patched conic levels so that I can see the orbit after that. In modding this series, I decided to mod that uh, setting as well so that I can see the future orbit. So this will be passing by the moon, which will create other inaccuracies, I'm sure. But we'll deal with that. This seems to be more or less accurate. And the boost we're getting from the moon is not going to be substantial. We're actually probably going to have to do this in two separate burns. We've got only two nukes uh, boosting us, so that's going to take too long. So we'll have to burn here and then uh, go around and burn again, at the very least, if not three burns. We'll see how long it takes. Should be noted that uh, the patch conics are essential for the reason why I keep uh, seeing cycler orbits is because of the patch conic levels. I've set it to five. Uh, if you're really interested in uh, complex maneuvers and gravity assist and all that, you should go into settings.config, look at conic patch limit, and uh, set to 7 probably. And then you'll be able to see more of that stuff going on. And, um, and of course moon encounters and minimus encounters and such like that I won't bother you so much because you can see the trajectory afterwards. Okay, let's go. Hmm, maybe I should have reconsidered before I decided to have the stage time for this stage be this long. 47 minutes left. Now we're not going to have to use all 47 minutes, but we're talking about maybe about 16 minutes left in this burn, which means we'll definitely have to go around a couple of times. Uh, oh well, anyway, that's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. Okay, this is burn number two. And critical for this is that we stay within the Kerbin SOI, obviously. Uh, if we try to escape now, um, things will be very inaccurate. Right now, we're starting quite early, as you can see, way before the periapsis. And we intend to finish out here somewhere. And then we'll have to go around all the way around before burning again to finally escape and do the final burn to reach uh, Drez level of apoapsis around the sun. Of course we won't be actually reaching Dres because we still have that mid-course plane change to do after that. So yeah, very complicated and all, but... And uh, it's also putting pressure on our intercept of that Class A asteroid, assuming that we still have two more missions to boost out, and hopefully they won't take quite as long as this one. They'll have much more thrust-weight ratio, but we'll have to see. Okay, I think I'm going to cut it at a four hour orbit to minimize the impact on the other missions. So we'll go around now and then we'll do our final burn. Okay, here we go for the burn out of Kerbin SOI, burn to escape, and head for Drez. Oh, nine minutes and fifty seconds according to that. Now our trajectory is relatively flat on this segment. I mean, I say relatively, but you can still see a bit of a curve there. That can lead to inaccuracies, but three burns, and so that's the best I can do. All right, see you at the end of it. Okay, coming up on the end of the burn here. Actually, I should probably just come out of physical time warp instead of throttling down. High degree of inaccuracy, of course, on this burn. Let's let's shut it down and see what's really going on, and I'll replot this one as well. That's a bit of skew from your normal Holman transfer. Let's say I just replot this and can we hit properly or not? Wow, we're, we're, we've probably overburned a bit. Let's just combine our retro burn here instead of doing it now. Okay, I'll, I think I'll take that approach for now and we'll fine tune it at this maneuver node. So it's now going to cost 102.3 Got to add that in for the Dreads Oasis. Okay, next mission.
Okay, so here we are with the Rocky 3 drilling unit, which is a natural choice for the next mission to send over because our Dreads Oasis won't be as productive as we would like without it being able to get access to Dreads' water. So this, hopefully Dreads has some water somewhere. So uh, here we go, and I've plotted the course for this. Uh, it's uh, 1,400 for the first burn and 772 for the second burn, so quite like what we've seen before, 114 days now, but uh, more more convincing home and transfer here. So it's just taking a little bit longer because on the previous transfers we hit earlier there. And so uh, 6,000 or so kilometers is the plan for the periapsis. Now this has three, uh, what you call it, uh, aerospikes at the bottom. So I expect that this transfer will be conducted a little bit quicker than the last one, which is good. Now, as far as our fuel is concerned, now we, I wanted to reserve the fuel up here for actually landing on Drez, but probably we'll have to use some of it to get into orbit around Drez as well. Anyway, it can uh, it can access fuel from many different locations, including the Drez Oasis will convert the water to fuel, so that's good. And we can uh, have some more fuel like that. Okay, so moving over to the maneuver node. Okay, I'm not too sure how long this will take. It's still a 97 ton vessel, so let's go. About 4 minutes 20 seconds. I, I think we can do it in one burn without being too inaccurate about it. Alright, I'll see you at the end of this. Okay, coming to the close of this burn, and we'll see how it went. Okay. So, let me tell SmartASS to stop that. Alright, I'll re replot this one just to see how far off we are. And for reference for the other missions as well. There we go. Okay, well that's our encounter. Let's add that in. All these alarms coming pretty close together as you can see. And so the last vehicle we need to deal with is the rover and so let's get to that okay so I've plotted it out and the rover is getting the same sort of deal that the other parts of the mission have except it's got the huge mainsail stage to give it an initial kick so that's good for the actual start of the transfer though it'll be a little bit slower once it gets to this stage this stage still probably has a good deal of thrust now, that's while that's all well and good, it's a little bit tough to turn this thing, so I'm letting Smart ASS turn to the node right now. Altogether, it's only 77 tons, though, which means that uh, this whole assembly is lighter than the Dwarves Oasis or the drilling unit. Not the actual units, but, uh, well, in the case of Dwarves Oasis, the actual unit, but... In the case of the drilling unit, the unit and the transfer stages. Okay, this is probably too close, but uh, here we go. A little bit late on the burn here. Okay, stage set. And ignition. Okay, so there's a further four minutes or so. Could be worse and definitely enough delta v to make up for any inaccuracies so that's good though uh, it also has, it has to do all the parts of the transfer and then we're hoping this will be enough for actually landing us on Drez. actually we need to shut off that tank that's the tank to supply the rover with fuel didn't seem to change this much though wonder how that works Oh, I know. The thrusters on this stage are pointing down, so it wouldn't count any of that. The additional delta V is actually from the rover itself. It's the little Rockamax uh, 48.7S on its tail. And that shouldn't be counted in uh, our activities. That's for its own purposes, hopping around the surface of Drez and doing science. Okay, coming up on the end of what I believe to have been a satisfactory burn. 
Okay. Let's see where we're at. Uh, it just needs a little bit of a tweak. Tweak, tweak. Yep, there, there. Okay. We'll fine tune it uh, later on. But let us make sure that we get our alarm in. Quite a tight uh, state of affairs, but next I want to take care of that asteroid. Okay, since we had a contract to eject the Class D out, I decided to track this Class D. I don't know if it's going to be the Class D that we wrangle. Wait, well, we're not actually going to wrangle it, we're just going to shoot it out. Uh, but uh, let's add a timer for it, for its uh, change of SOI. And so it's going to come into Kerbin SOI in 52 days. And that's after the bulk of what I'm going to be trying to do. So maybe it'll be convenient at that time to take a look at that. Okay, but uh, next thing is this Class A. And for that, I'm going to use one of the space tugs that we currently have in orbit around Kerbin. Okay, so here we are with our nuke-powered space tug. Along with its transfer stage, this is the second stage of the Maximus. And so we'll have to bring this back down, obviously. But uh, here it is. It's got 12,000 meters per second of delta V. I've already plotted our intercept with the asteroid in question. Again, uh, class A, right at the descending node, so I don't have to do a plane change close to Kerbin or anything. I'll do the plane change when we meet it out there, which will be much more efficient. And so we're burning out of the ascending node to hit it over there. And uh, uh, the timing had to be uh, such that I have to burn in how long? One day, two hours, and 57 minutes. Now you see nine hours and 54 minutes there, but that's when the asteroid enters the sphere of influence of Kerbin. So Kerbin encounter, actually it's in 15 hours. I'm not too sure about, uh, I, maybe uh, on the alarm I gave myself some margin is probably what happened, maybe. Anyway, but uh, yep, this is the path, uh, just verifying. KKL482, uh, Class A. So uh, there it says it right there. So we are aiming for the right asteroid. And it's going to be a hefty burn to match uh, speeds with it and then grapple it, of course. But uh, that's just part of the business, and that's why we have all the Delta V. Okay, so yep, I think that's all the good parts spoken for. We just have to wait around a while and then we can hit there. It's a separation of 285 kilometers right now. We'll adjust as we get closer. Uh, obviously, I have to press the plus button to uh, get this done. Anyway, see you in a day and two hours. Okay, uh, two more minutes till the node and we're turning to it. I think the engines on this can accelerate this pretty fast. Let's activate them first though. And I think we'll give it a little bit more time. Let me get rid of the alarm and let's proceed. Okay, let's go. Uh, not bad. This tank is locked, so all this 2000 is whatever we can use for the mission. We really don't need so much for a Class A. This is built for a much heftier asteroid, clearly. Still haven't uh, gotten down to that, but with the Class D, I suppose we'll, we will be. We might have to launch more than one of these. Uh, we've got one extra one in orbit around Kerbin already, but we might have to launch a few more if we're going to deal with that asteroid and send it out into interstellar space why the Kerbals want to send an asteroid into interstellar space, I have no idea, but they're giving us a lot of funds to do so. Oh, we've got some uh, debris passing by. I uh, can't quite see what it is. That's, oh, Space Tug Gamma. Oh, uh, that, that might actually be related to us. That would explain why it's in the same orbit. So it's another Space Tug Gamma piece, probably from this. All right, well, we're getting close to the end of this burn. Let's have Smart ASS not hold there. Now we have a lot of spare Delta V, and I could use the Delta V from this stage to help us match velocities with the, with the asteroid. The flaw in that is that then this is going to, well, 
It, it, it could do. Then it'll have to use this fuel to help it uh, slow down again and get itself back down. But I'd rather use the fuel to slow it down into uh, Kerbin orbit so it doesn't burn up. Uh, it always has heat issues, so need to watch out for that. Now this encounter is not working quite the way I wanted it to. So let's make some fine adjustments. Let's see, is it this way? No, it's the opposite direction. We overburn just a little bit. Okay, this apparently gets us to 22.3, which is not bad for an asteroid encounter like this. So we will uh, start that out. Just an hour and 55 minutes. And it's just a 7.8 meter per second adjustment. So far, by the way, the game has not crashed. I say that with some trepidation and worrying that I might jinx it. But uh, basically, the crashes I get tend to be when I go to the VAB or the launch pad. When I'm trying to launch a rocket, then that seems to create huge ram spikes that cause crashes. Uh, otherwise, going to the tracking station, it's alright to go back to the space center, it seems. The tracking station doesn't cause the problem. And being out in space with the vehicles doesn't seem to cause the problem very much. So that's interesting to note about uh, the quirks of the current setup. Well, 27. I'll take that for now. I don't even know if we'll get 27 or 28 kilometer separation, but Okay, so uh, over there we'll be separating this off, and so let's just extend the panels up here to make sure that I don't forget that. Oh, I forgot. It doesn't take much velocity to match speeds with the target at all because uh, because we're so far away from Kerbin. That's true. I mean, when I say not much speed, it's still going to cost apparently about 500, but, you know, that's not as bad as it could be. I suppose I will have the aerospike stage handled uh, matching, and that's simply because the nuke is bound to take a long time to do it, and I want things done quickly. So we can see the gap here. We'll handle that with the with the nuke. Let's have the Mechjeb rendezvous thing up. Uh, oh yeah, target. There we go. I don't want the closest approach distance to start going up as we're making this adjustment. I'll stop it at, at 30 kilometers closest approach distance. I don't want to go beyond that. Oh, it's going down now. Up, oh, going up again. Okay, so 30 kilometers is the limit. Uh, let me bring this stage off. Yep. And activate the nuke. Okay. The nuke is going to complete this part. And then I'll deal with the transfer stage in a little bit. Actually, I'll leave it there. It says 1 hour and 25 minutes. Let me go back to the transfer stage. Now I'm going to have the transfer stage retro burn into descent. Because right now it's on escape. And I can unlock its reserve tank. Plenty of Delta V to spare. Okay, for this I'll go to. Yeah, 29.6 or 30 kilometer periapsis is fine. I'm gonna add a maneuver to it though because I want to use the remaining fuel to slow it down before it actually hits the atmosphere. So, to that end. Okay, that's a pretty good slowdown, so I'll take that maneuver. And I'm going to add that to my clock. 